That's Painted Shield finally together in a studio where they'll jam till God turns the lights on. Painted Shield is Pearl Jam guitarist Stone Gossard's other band, which also includes session drummer Supreme Matt Chamberlain, keyboard player and vocalist Brittany Davis, and singer-songwriter Mason Jennings. I spoke to Jason a couple of months ago when he released his solo album. Now here he is again, but in baby mode. We've got the Painted Shield thing to talk about rather than your solo thing. Oh, yeah. And so since I, since the record, your record came out and this is about to, kind of what, what have you been up to? What has your priority been? What have you been thinking about? Well, I just had a baby five weeks ago. Oh, my, my God. My wife had a baby. So <laughs> we have a newborn at home. So it's kind of been, that's the mode. Yeah, I got you. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And is then, it- you know, doing a couple shows. I did a couple shows for my, uh, my record, but mostly it's just been baby mode. You got any plans? What's happening with the band? And what do you? Well, we're already working on a third record, actually. I so heard that. Kind of, that's yeah, insane. So we're working on that. And then also, I think we're hopefully going to be doing maybe a, a festival or two at the end of the summer. Pearl Jam is going to be out for pretty much the whole summer. Right. And then I'm hoping maybe maybe in October we'll do a string of shows. Like first week of October, we're probably going to do some shows and, a, and maybe a festival or two. Right, right, right. And did I see you're releasing some kind of live video yesterday, today, tomorrow? Yeah, we just put out a live video for um, the song Till God Turns the Lights On. We have a few more of those lined up. We met for a while in January in Seattle and recorded a bunch of videos, like a bunch of live versions of the songs. And so yep. those, those will come out over the next couple months. I think there's maybe six to eight in total. So we've had a couple come out and there'll be a few more as we go. And what, what was the vibe like when you were doing this in January? And you're Incredible. Finally being in the same room together. <laughs> yeah, like it was, it was, yeah, we'd only, only talked on the phone. And so we, well, you know, I had never even met Matt or Britt in person. So Really? Um, yes, yeah, so we all met, and um, Jeff Fielder was there on bass, so he kind of jo- is joining the group, and he's great. And I hadn't met him, and so we were at the Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam has this big warehouse; it's like completely magical in there. And so it's just uh, we were in there for a few days, and I mean, I was just blown away by the musicianship, especially Britt. And I mean, I know Stone was amazing, but Britt um, on keyboards, and then. Yep. Uh, Matt Chamberlain on drums like nobody had to retake anything like they would just do the takes and then I was the one that had to be like okay let's do this we do that again for me and and then they're just like I never make a mistake was kind of (laughs) mind-blowing I can imagine now speaking of Matt it looks like you and Matt have written the song a good portion of the songs together and seeing that you've never met that's kind of interesting how did that work (laughs) so uh stone kept telling me he's like we should have matt play drums but you know what matt always writes these great instrumentals and sends them to me and we got to get him to be doing more um songwriting so then we kind of talked matt into sending me some of his instrumentals and they're just they're incredible and and like um he's got this great studio i think he's his studio is an old sound city like where nirvana recorded uh the drums for like uh never mind and stuff i think that's his drum space and he's got all these keyboards so <laughs> He would like record these great drums with the keyboards and send them to me. And then I was just a lot of times I'd have these old folk songs like that. I'd fi- I'd written parts of or I hadn't finished over the last four or five years. And I would be like, oh, I kind of like these verses. And then I would just sort of sing a new melody over um, a new melody over what he sent me and, and just see if it fit. And sometimes stuff would kind of become magical and kind of fit together. And, and that's how a few of these songs came to be. Right. So the album. So it's sort of, yeah. it was sort of neat. It, it starts with a track called Drink the Ocean, which you and Matt have written together. What can, why is that at the beginning of the record? And when was it written and how? Ocean, I can't drink you. But I can't have things.
yeah that was one of those ex uh, really exactly what i was talking about i had this song that had all these lyrics and it was i liked the lyrics but it was really kind of too uh something was just a little bit too one way about it maybe a little too like uh I don't know, just just straight too folky for me or something. And then he sent me this this drum track that sort of sounded like Phil Collins or something. And it was like really bombastic. And I was like, oh, maybe I can, maybe Matt's energy in this in this track will, um, you know, sort of fit good with this this folky these lyrics. And then so we did that. And, and so the front half of the song is is the original stuff that Matt sent. And then we gave it to Brittany and um, stone and then they were like oh we should make it kind of get bigger as the song goes and then the back half will be this big like solo and and all this you know kind of expanse so it's kind of it started with me and matt and then the whole back half of the song is Brittany and stone kind of like taking it into outer space a little more and then we recorded with this guy josh evans at the producer and he really manipulated the sound on the back half of it too he really like loves like messing with sound and like you know like things get really trippy by the end of that song so that's josh evans at the end kind of just really taking it to another place too so that's a good example of like all of us getting involved slowly as the process of one song well that makes me think of the falling out of the sky track because at the end of that it got speaking of trippy it got a little beetly in there and kind of and and britney is singing i believe which is, is yeah a plus as well so what what can you tell me about them putting together that track So that was, so Brit brought the riff in with the choruses. Right. And so she had the choruses and then she was like, I like this riff, but it kind of sounds like the sixties. And then Stone and Stone was like, I want to bring out more of the, the Beatles -y kind of, so he, he had a guitar and then Matt heard it and was like, I want to bring a Stooges energy to, I, I want to bring it more Stooges. So he, his drumming is more <laughs> thinking of the Stooges. And then I came in and was like, you know, kind of what I like to do is bring a story element to it. So like all the lyrics in the beginning are like, okay, we're falling out of the sky. Like, let's do a bunch of stuff about, you know, being on a ship that's going or an airplane that's coming down in your life. And so like that was, and then I wrote a bunch of lyrics at the end and sort of sang the verses. And then that's how that kind of came to be. Oh, very cool. Now there's a track called Dead Man's Dream, which is very Led Zeppelin. -y, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking about, I hear it start up and I go on, um, it sounds like you're going to have to it, get in touch with your inner Robert Plant to sing this song. Tell him what did you do? It's a hard road anyway it comes. Life is good if you have the guns. Got a bad idea. It still sounds fun. It still sounds fun. Is it all for love? Is it all in vain? Is it all alive? Is it all the same? Is it all my fault? Can we share the blame? Share the blame. I kind of went the opposite because I was like, that's my whole life I've wanted, I love Robert Plant, he's like my favorite. And so like, I was like, but I have a low voice. Right. So right. I just go, all right, I can't even touch that. Or like, I love Jack White and you know, I'm like, I can't even go there. So I was like, why don't I go the total opposite? So oftentimes I'll take a song like that and I'll turn it down in my headphones and just play acoustic guitar along with it. And then kind of just sing what I would just sing over those chords and then take my guitar out and then turn the guitars and then turn the heavy guitars back up. And so I'm just looking for some new kind of ground, something new that rather than trying to go head to head with, you know, the Zeppelin stuff. And right, I think Brittany right. helps with that too, because Brit, she's playing the bass on a, on a, like a synthesizer and she's got such a, um, it's got such a cool synthy sound. So like my different kind of vocal and her synth kind of hopefully pull it a little away from Zepp, whereas like, Stone and Matt are just going full, you know, right. Van, Van Halen on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So, so I read that, that most of the record was recorded across various home studios in various times, which doesn't sound like an ideal way to make a record. So how did, how do you, how do you feel about working like that? It's challenging, you know, but like, you know, like Matt and Stone both have such unbelievable I mean, you know, their studios aren't really home studios. They're like the best of the best studios. And then I just need a good microphone and um, which I have at home. So 
I don't mind because I can do my vocals without anybody being there, which is kind of nice because nobody can, you know, like they talk about, you know, when Prince was making his record, he would always have everybody leave when Prince right. would do the vocals. So I kind of feel like privacy for the vocals is I can try weird stuff and it works OK. I think our third record, I think we're sure we're going to go and all hang out because when we were just in Seattle, we recorded a new track. Oh, yeah. Um, for our next one. And we all did it in the same room and it was so much fun. And it was like okay there's not there's like our first two records were done remotely now the third one will probably be more like a in the room together kind of thing so why how are you ready to do a third album is it just uh, this burst of creativity i think just you know there's just all of us kind of right and all of us have stuff coming in and, and we've been working for two years mostly the pandemic being home a lot i think we just have a lot of you know, each of us has like three or four songs that we can kind of bring in and it, then you have a record suddenly. Uh, OK, now I noticed uh, the last couple of tracks, White and Full Moon in Daylight, were pretty much just you and Matt and Brittany, the three of you kind of working together. How did that happen? There's a body in the car Out across my headlights in the field see white yeah stone's not on white that's a that's an old that's a real i wrote that song like 20 years ago actually and it was going to be on one of my first records and then when i heard matt sent me that his drumming track just as its own thing and i thought you know maybe i could just put like really simple chords and do that song of mine to go against his like really cool electronic beat so it was kind of just him and me and then Brittany and i sang that a duet i thought oh, it might be cool if she sings with me so that's how that came about and then um, let's think full moon. That's actually Stone. Stone recorded a guitar part on onto his phone in his right. kitchen one day and <laughs> sent it to Matt. And then Matt put it through some crazy program on his computer and turned and that the music came from that. And then I wrote to that. And then Brittany just played this beautiful, beautiful piano. So um, yeah, it's weird. These things come in different ways, but that actually is Stone on that. The guitar is kind of quiet, but that's a, that's a Stone oh, okay. with the music okay. to that one. I can see right behind the door Finally I don't doubt it anymore So when you're writing for Painted Shield, is are you in a different headspace than when you're doing your own solo stuff in writing? Is there yeah, most for the most part, because a lot of what I do when I'm just sitting around by myself is I'm working on the music and the chords and I control like the core, the feeling of the chords and the music. And it's mostly all acoustic guitar or piano. And then I write the lyrics out of that. But with these guys, the music comes in almost totally done usually. And then I'm just a lot of times I drive around in the car and listen to it really loud and just sing or I take old songs that weren't finished of mine and I try to put it over their music. So it's, it's really different. Like it's, I don't ever have a guitar in my hand or I'm never playing piano. Uh -huh. um, so it's just a, you know, really different. It's just physically different because I'm not like, I'm not like creating the, the tones or the music. I'm just, I'm just fitting into a, a, something that's already kind of created. So do you have a backlog of lyrics that you can draw from? I think it's getting kind of, <laughs> they're getting pretty much used up. Like I was thinking that I was like, there's a, maybe a few here and there, but after these, now that we're on the third record, it's going to probably have to be new, new lyrics. <laughs> some new of lyrics. them have been new. Yeah. Some of them have been new, but yeah, I think the cat, I think the backlog is dried up at this point. So, so you guys plan on taking the show on the road? Are you going to tour? Or what, what's I hope so. We're going to do that. I think we're going to do that a week in October and them maybe next year we'll do more of like some bigger chunks like once pearl jam it, it kind of just gets dictated by pearl jam and then matt is on retainer with brandy carlisle he plays right. drums for her so and that <laughs> ends in january so maybe maybe after that we'll do some kind of big chunk of you just shows. gotta gotta find your opening and go for it <laughs> yeah gotta find the opening <laughs> and what's it like out on in the road these days is it different than it was two years ago for you guys yeah it's it's very weird for 
for me, I mean, some shows have been sort of normal and some shows like a fifth as many people come because right. uh, it just depends on the city. It's real strange. Like sometimes I think for younger bands, it's probably pretty normal, but for older crowds, I don't think people are coming out to the shows as much. So it's a little weird for sure. All right. Well, you, you mentioned several times about the third album is in the, is in the works. Just give me a hint as to what, how it's going to sound. How is it going to be different, the same or whatever? What can you tell I me? I think about it'll that? be, I think it'll be more of a unified, like this, these last two records are kind of a little bit all over the place, more eclectic and yeah. just, you know, and this one will probably, I think this one might have more of a cohesive because if we're all in the same studio together for a couple of weeks and we mold it together, it'll probably be a little more, uh, it'll be a little earthier. I think if somebody like listens to these live videos, we just put out, like, I think the live videos might give you a clue of yep. like how we might sound on the next record. Yeah. I definitely got that vibe from watching the one that just came out yesterday. It was like, yeah, they're a band. <laughs> We're a band. And, and it's cool. Cause Brit, Brittany's playing all these solos, but it sounds like a guitar, but it's actually a keyboard. So like yep. we have this kind of, she's amazing. Cause it's kind of a different thing. And, and I'm excited to hear what the next record will sound like. Cause of more soloing, I think for sure. Probably. Oh, excellent. All righty. Well, I can't wait to hear it now either. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, have a great day. Thanks for spending time. Hopefully the record does well. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. See my right. pleasure. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.